This is a Lamborghini Huracan. But it's not just any Lamborghini Huracan. This is an ad personum Lamborghini Huracan, showing just a small selection of the almost infinite number of ways in which you can now personalise your Santa Gata supercar. What's more, the fact that people are personalising their cars to a greater degree these days rather flies in the face of the all-pervasive speculator narrative. We all know that some people are just buying rare cars in safe, resaleable colours and then driving them approximately three miles before chopping them in for whacking great profits. But the personalised car is anathema to that. It screams, I'm keeping this, it's all mine. And I like that. Now, don't get me wrong, I can completely understand why some of you might think this is all just pure vanity. If I was ever lucky enough to spec up a Lamborghini, I think I'd be fairly puritanical in my tastes as well. But equally, I do understand the desire for personalisation. I mean, look at children. They do it with stickers on their pencil cases. We do it with cases for our mobile phones, different colour handlebar tape on our bicycles. We all like a bit of individuality, something that says it's ours. So what's this Lamborghini got on it that's, that's different? Well, the, the ad personum things on this, it's got quite a lot. It's got all of this forged composite, forged carbon, this sort of chopped up weave in it. You can see here, we've got beautiful stitching on the seats, we've got the blue colour which is distinctive in its own right. The standout feature in terms of price though, and this will make your eyes water, is the stripe. £13,000. Yes, that's about £13,000 for a stripe. I suppose if you're buying a Lamborghini, you can afford it. Of course, personalisation is as old as the automobile itself. And these days, most manufacturers offer some special department to deal with requests. Porsche Exclusive is perhaps best known for the paint-to-sample service. McLaren's MSO seems to specialise in adding carbon fibre scoops and vents, while Mini brought individuality to the masses with its variety of roofs. Of course, some cars suit a bit of personalisation more than others. Lamborghini, well, they're so exuberant, so wild, that you can get away with pretty much whatever you want, I think. I mean, an Audi R8 in bright green with a Mohican of a German flag down the middle just wouldn't be right. It'd be a bit like seeing straight, sober Colin Firth dressed like Elton John. Of course, underneath all this ad personum stuff is a standard Hurricane. It's the first time I've spent any decent amount of time in a standard four-wheel drive Hurricane, and it is rather wonderful. The drivetrain is just mind-blowingly good. That naturally aspirated V10 mated to a simply stunning dual clutch gearbox. The Aventador needs this gearbox, it's so good. The four-wheel drive chassis is coming for a bit of criticism for being a bit understeery, but to be honest, the major sensation is just one of pure grip. Yes, you can bounce it a bit through the corners, but the understeer only really comes in when you're on the throttle, out of corners, and yes, you get that typical four-wheel drive thing of perhaps pulling a bit with the nose rather than pushing from the rear, but wow, what a car. There's this perception that turbocharged cars are the way to get real speed, but this is so fast. Because the four-wheel drive lets you deploy all of the 600 brake horsepower, really can't see what would beat it across the ground. One thing I have to say I wouldn't spec is the dynamic steering, although we've got three modes here on the anima button. The Sport is definitely the best setting for the road. Suspension just right, blind enough, but giving you enough confidence on the winter corners. The steering does actually feel, feels all right, but why pay extra for something that's not brilliant? No, it's not as playful as something like a 488, but you can forgive this car so much because of this engine. Now, this whole ad personum stuff got me thinking. What I'd really like to be able to do is personalise my road route. In fact, personalise my whole drive. Now that, that would be brilliant. If you could tailor the tarmac, what would an ad personum drive look like? For me, it would start early, really early, 
because I love that feeling of having the world to myself. Headlights flicking on in the pre-dawn darkness, sneaking, well, as much as you can sneak with a V10, out of town while others are slumbering. There wouldn't be too much motorway to tackle, and although I like forests because they remind me of rally stages, I think we'll leave them behind for this drive. Instead, parking somewhere up high, in the middle of nowhere, in time to watch the sun come up. Then the proper driving will begin, on spectacular, remote roads. But in the same way that you can choose the stitching on your Hurricane's leather, in this fantasy there's a choice of width of road. Definitely wider than this. A bit better. Ah, there we are. Just right. I've picked Wales, by the way, as it does arguably the best, most testing roads in the world. And while some might want to lift up the asphalt and put it among the Alps or Himalayas, that's into the realms of coach building rather than just personalisation. Nonetheless, let's stitch different sections of tarmac together like the electric track. A selection of bends, tight, flowing, open, and obviously some straights too. Traffic, all avoided. Sheep would have half a semblance of sense and stay on the grass too. There would be a petrol station with super unloaded, just where you wanted it. Oh, what the hell, I am going to include that narrow road, but let's make it one way. The weather, that's a tricky one. I love driving in the wet, always have, so perhaps there would be a section with rain. But predominantly, I think I'd want sunshine, if only so that I could put the windows down and hear the sound of the V10 being whisked away in the warm slipstream. Then, just when you're nearly sated with sound and scenery and sensations, teetering on the edge of tiredness, there would be a coffee shop. No, not one of those, something proper, with good Italian coffee to go with the car. And cake, definitely cake. After all, it would be hungry work, dreaming up your next very personal drive.